Hello everyone at Medical Sciences. Today we want to discuss about cell death. That is necrosis versus apoptosis. So in the previous video we have looked at the introduction to cell injury and we saw cellular adaptations. In this session we want to look at necrosis and apoptosis and as we begin we remind you to subscribe, hit the like button and share to others. In this session we are going to begin with necrosis then we shall look at the different types of necrosis then we shall look at apoptosis and we shall end up with differences between necrosis and apoptosis and necrosis which is a type of cell death this necrosis is cell death it is whereby tissue or cells or it is a type of cell death and this type of cell death is characterized is characterized by whereby the cells which have undergone necrosis they lose cell membrane integrity there is loss of cell membrane integrity then we shall see also changes within changes in the cellular organelles and the cell organelles occur that is in necrosis and when the cell has undergone necrosis the cellular organelles they, they disintegrate they disintegrate whereby even the nucleus we shall see the nucleus undergoing pyknosis then can undergo karyoheresis karyoheresis it can even undergo karyolysis karyolysis whereby pyknosis is the, this is nuclear con the nucleus condenses or shrinks then in the cardiohelesis we see nuclear fragmentation this one is nuclear shrinkage this is nuclear fragmentation then this one is nuclear dissolution here the nucleus dissolves and there is lack of nuclear staining that is the nuclear changes but on the membrane we lose the cell membrane integrity is lost why is it lost is that whenever there is in necrosis there is destruction or denaturation of due to activation of proteases or that is lysosomes and you can see even phosphorylases when they are activated they destroy these organelles cell organelles or constituents and when these organelles are, are, are destroyed we also see destruction they destroy the cell membrane and after destruction of the cell membrane the, the cellular contents leak out the constituents of the cell leak out due to loss of membrane integrity and when they leak out to the extracellular fluid this leakage will come and activate inflammatory it will cause inflammatory response or it will lead to what we call inflammation so we see inflammation in necrosis due to leakage of intracellular components of cells because after destruction of the membrane we see this leakage of cellular contents and whenever they reach in the extracellular fluid they elicit inflammatory mediators leading to inflammation so this is what we can discuss about necrosis and this process of necrosis it is passive it is passive so meaning no atp is required 
And another thing, it is only pathological. It is only pathological. It is not physiological. It occurs under pathology when we saw in the previous video when we saw causes of cell injury and death. That when there is high stress, these cells they can result into necrosis, which I've said it is only pathological. It is passive, no ATP is required, and we see loss of cellular integrity, leading to leakage of intracellular materials into the extracellular, hence triggering inflammation. And we saw we have seen cellular changes occur within the cell whereby we see disintegration of endoplasmic reticulum. Then we see activation of lysosomes. We have seen loss of cell integrity and even the nucleus undergoing shrinkage, fragmentation, and at the end it is lost. Then there are different types of necrosis, whereby the first one is coagulative necrosis. And this coagulative necrosis, here the cell integrity is maintained. There is no loss of cell integrity, but the proteins, but the, there is coagulation, but proteins coagulate. Proteins, cellular alcohol, and the other cellular contents within the cell coagulates. Or you can say they are denatured. And following, following the denaturation of these cellular components like proteins, we are going to see activation or due to lack of these proteins, this coagulative necrosis is seen as yellow-white, yellowish. It, it always characterized by yellowish appearance. And this yellowish appearance under coagulative necrosis, it is the one that leads to the this appearance of this color, which we are calling yellow, or sometimes it can be white. So this is, but the major point under coagulative necrosis is destruction of the intracellular content or the cellular organelles, but without disturbing the cell membrane integrity. So here we see maintenance of cellular integrity. And afterwards, these cells which have been formed, they are always cleared by macrophages. They are always cleared by macrophages, that is the phago cytosis, they undergo phagocytosis. So that is what we can talk. So the key point to note is the cell integrity is maintained with the destruction of intracellular contents. Then under recrefactive necrosis, for it we shall see it occurs, this recrefactive, it major occurs in a pyogenic infection, can call them pyogenic or bacterial infection. Bacterial, like in whereby there is bacterial abscess. Abscess is pus formation. There is pus formation. So here the key thing is under liquefactive, due to the softening of the tissue or liquefaction of the tissues, they did it what we call pus formation majorly seen in the bacterial infection and the brain infarct. We can also see it in the brain infection, which is part of the CNS. And this brain infection occurs due to ischemia, due to loss of oxygen supply. So the peculiar point to note under recrefactive necrosis is that there is loss, even another point here, there is loss of cell integrity, cell membrane. There is loss of cell membrane integrity. So the, here there is loss of cell membrane integrity and intracellular contents, and it is seen in the brain infarct and bacterial infection characterized by pus formation. So the one, the type of necrosis where there is pus formation is the recrefactive. Then fat necrosis, this one occurs in the tissues with high fat content, tissues with high fat 
content and because there is high fat content these fats they are destroyed and after being destroyed they result into what we call formation or deposition of calcium ions there is deposition deposition of calcium ions and remember these fatty contents release fatty acids and these the places tissues with high fat content is like blessed you can see them in the mammary glands that is the blessed whereby due to the rise of fatty acids these fatty acids combine with the calcium to form to form what we call soap by the process known as saponification so they form soap in the tissue due to deposition of calcium ion and this type is known as dystrophic calcification so it occurs in the tissues with high fat content like blasts and we see due to the rise of fatty acids calcium combine to form soap what we call saponification which is known as dystrophic calcification so this is what we can talk about under necrosis which occurs in high fat content tissues like the blast and results into dystrophic calcification whereby calcium binds with fatty acids then in cassius necrosis cassius means cheese like cheese like so the necrosis under this type is cheese like it is cheese like and this type of cassius necrosis which is a cheese like or white in color it is a peculiar of tb infection tuberculosis infection whereby it is characterized by granulomas granuloma formation is characterized by granuloma formation what are granulomas granulomas is whereby the macrophages when they are coming to phagocytosize these mycobacteria tuberculosis when they are coming to engulf so they come and engulf as they are fighting and they form what we call epithelioid epithelioid is the one which we no as so the, we see these phagocytic cells like macrophages as round cells within the destroyed tissue which we are calling granuloma formation a peculiar of tuberculosis infection and sometimes the fungal infections then number 5 we can talk about gangrenous and and gangrenous necrosis is due to ischemia ischemia which is brought about by hypoxia and it occurs majorly in distal organs that is extremities like feet or we can call them toes and this one sometimes is always always seen also in a diabetic foot you see in a diabetic foot whereby it is characterized by blackening blackening of the toys so the, the toys become black due to a cut off of oxygen supply to these extremities and this is what we call dry gangrene there is wet gangrene and dry gangrene so this one is type of wet of dry gangrene then number last is the fibrinoid necrosis and this fibrinoid necrosis it is major occur in the vascular vessels or in the blood vessels Okay, in blood vessels due to activation of platelets activation of platelets and fibrin so and it activates platelets and coagulation and this platelet activation leads to deposition of fibrin fibrin is deposited in the blood vessels resulting in two damage of the blood vessels so at the end in the fibrinoid necrosis which is characterized by fibrin deposition here we see it is fibrin deposition in the blood vessels and when deposited 
it damages, it causes damage to the smooth muscles or to the endothelium of blood vessels. So this is what we can discuss under the types of necrosis. And you, as a student, you should always know the key point under each. We have seen under coagulative, cellular integrity is maintained. Only the intracellular contents are damaged. In the refractive, we have seen pus formation is a peculiar thing seen in the bacterial infection and brain infarct. Then we have seen in the fatty necrosis, it occurs in tissues of high fat content, and it is characterized by saponification, what we call dystrophic calcification. Then the cautious necrosis, which is a cheese-like appearance, seen in the TB infection, and characterized by granuloma formation, due to the macrophages within that Necrotize the tissue. Then the gangrenous, I have said, is due to the cutoff of oxygen supply, which leads to ischemia and major occurs in the extremities, like in the toys, characterized by blackening. Then lastly, the fibrinoid, which occur in the blood vessels, whereby there is fibrin deposition is the key point, which damages the endothelium or the smooth muscles of the blood vessels. As we conclude, as we are nearly to conclude, we are going to talk about apoptosis. We saw different points under necrosis. Now we want to see apoptosis. And this apoptosis, which is commonly known as programmed cell death, this is programmed cell death. It is ATP dependent, meaning it is an active process whereby cells which are destroyed, destroyed DNA and other cell contents which are destroyed beyond repair. When they are destroyed beyond repair, they are the ones that undergo apoptosis whereby they are cleared. They are cleared out of the saturation. And the, 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 the peculiar type, type of activators involved are caspases and the BCL2. These are the ones that play a big role, whereby within the mitochondria, they will end up cutting off production of ATP. So if there is no ATP, at the end, if there is no ATP, at first there is ATP production to and it will list the process, but at the end it will cut off the ATP production in the mitochondria. And when there is no ATP in the cell, the cell will undergo death. They are killed. And this process, which is different from the process which is pathological, this process is either pathologic, it can be pathologic, or physiologic, depending on the initiation or trigger factor. It can be physiologic or it can be pathologic. And this one, as we saw in necrosis, there is loss of cellular integrity. Here there is cell integrity is maintained. There is cell membrane integrity is maintained in a necrosis, though there is a formation of apoptotic blebs. There is bleb formation. The new the, the, the membrane forms blebs, what we call apoptotic blebs, but inside the cell, the constituents of the cell are destroyed. Whereby, like nucleus undergoes shrinkage, we shall see shrinkage of nucleus and other cell and other components, but the cell integrity, cell membrane integrity is maintained. And because cell membrane is maintained, there is no leakage. Here we shall see no leakage of intracellular contents, no leakage of intracellular contents. And because there is no leakage of intracellular contents, no inflammation. There is no inflammation which is triggered. So there is no inflammation, only blebs. Are formed. That is apoptosis, which is programmed death, characterized by 
which is both pathologic and physiologic, and the cell integrity or cell membrane integrity is maintained. There is blood formation, and then the constituents are destroyed within the cell, but there is no leakage because the cell integrity is maintained, and because there is no cell in leakage, no inflammatory mediators triggered. And so we see in apoptosis there is no inflammation. Lastly, we can talk about the differences between apoptosis and necrosis. So we want to look at the differences between necrosis and apoptosis. And under necrosis, we have seen this process is passive because no ATP involved. Here we have said it is active because ATP is involved. We have seen here there is inflammation. Why is it there? Inflammation is because of the loss of cellular content, but here there is bleb, apoptotic bleb, it is bleb formation. Here we have seen there is loss of cell membrane integrity. Loss of cell membrane integrity. Here, integ cell integrity is maintained. It's maintained. It is maintained. And we have seen here the nucleus under necrosis, the nucleus undergoes shrinkage, there is nuclear shrinkage and the condensation on the, in, that this is occurs in, necro, in apoptosis. In, in, in necrosis we see the nucleus undergoing ichnosis, undergoing cardiolexis and undergoing cardiolysis meaning there is even loss of nuclear staining whereby the cells become, they, they shrink, then they fragment and they are lost. Well, as in an apoptosis, there is only nuclear shrinkage, but it is not, there is nuclear shrinkage and fragmentation. That is what we can see about the differences between necrosis and apoptosis. And another one we can talk about in this session is that the cell, there is here the cell, the, the organelles within the cell aggregate. Here in apoptosis, the cells aggregate. But in necrosis, we see that there is breakdown. Breakdown of cells. But here there is just aggregation of cells within necrosis. So this is what we can talk about in this session. Maybe the last one is we have always told you that necrosis here it is it can it is only pathologic. It is only pathologic pathological whereas this one is both pathologic and physiological. So this one we cannot forget it. So these are the, some of the differences between necrosis and apoptosis. Hope you guys, you have learned a lot from this session where we have looked at the differences between, we have seen necrosis, different types of necrosis. We have seen apoptosis, which is a program of the cell death. And we have seen also the differences between necrosis and apoptosis. Thank you so much for listening. And may the good Lord bless you.